All right, now we're going to cover some techniques from the quarter or turtle position, whatever you want to call it. Now we're going to bring our opponent here. And the turtle position, sometimes I find myself facing my opponent and he is underneath me. This can happen because he tried a shot on me and I sprawl, or it may happen on the ground just because he tried to sweep me, he fell, and I landed on top. There are many possibilities for this to happen. When this happens, the first thing I need to know is how to position myself on top. So I always need to stay heavy. His power, whenever he's in the turtle position, comes from the leg. So I got to nullify that by bringing his hips towards his heels. So I'm trying to apply pressure in this direction here. Do not try to be heavy simply downwards because it's not going to work. If I'm heavy here near his back, I'm going to be extremely light near his hips. So here's how you're going to do this. Whenever he's in this position, a good choice of attack here is the front headlock. I'm going to bring my shoulder between his shoulder blades like this, and I do not want to stay on my knees. I want to stay off my knees, driving forward. And this is where I'm going to apply the pressure there, towards his hips, towards his heels. Now, as far as my upper body, the grip that I'm using here is a chin strap grip. So I'm not grabbing the gi here. I'm just coming with him. I four fingers by his jaw here, like that. Thumb is on the same side. There's no need to go like this. I want to go like this here. Now, as far as the arm goes, I want to control that arm on the outside. There's no need to use the gi. And my shoulder is between his shoulder blades, like I said. Here. Once I snap the opponent down to this position, now I'm ready to execute a go behind. My opponent is on his knees and not yet in a complete turtle position. I need to snap him down to get him there. I don't want to start this position until his elbows are on the ground. So say he's right here or something, I need to really bring that guy down by snapping him down with a head tie. So right here, I'm going to snap him down and get him to a full turtle position. Once you get to that turtle position, then it's the time for the front headlock here. So I'm controlling the head and the neck with my right hand, and I'm controlling his right arm with my left arm by the elbow. Now, my goal is to circle to expose the back. The problem with circling is if I just let go of his arm and try to circle, he might bring the arm up. And if that happens as I'm spinning around, he will get the back. In order to prevent that, I'm going to have to let go of my chin strap control and bring it to block that arm. So here's what it looks like. Start with the normal head tie here, normal head lock. So from the front head lock, I'm going to release the grip around the chin while maintaining pressure with my shoulder. Bring that hand outside by his arm and only after blocking like this, you're going to start spinning around. So I block first to guarantee that arm is not going to move sideways and then I circle. My left hand goes towards his left hip and then I spin around. Once I spin around, I try to get to this position here. My foot is flat. My knees on the ground. I'm not trying to dig in with this arm. If I start going too deep here with that left arm, I allow him to grab it and then I'm going to be rolled out of it. There are a lot of grabby rolls, roll variations there that he can use. This hand here, depending on what I want to do, it might come towards the gi collar. It might open right here. So it really depends on what my goal is. Again, front headlock, control, go behind. The second technique that we're going to execute today is the knee tap. In order to execute the knee tap, I get my opponent here in a go behind position. And now what I will do here is open him up. So maybe he's basing out or I just open him up. And for the front headlock position, I'm going to release the chin strap here, and I'm going to go to the outside of the knee, thumb down. So chin strap, outside of the knee, thumb down. While I do that, 
I'm going to also apply pressure here, driving with my shoulder in my arm into the side of his neck. Now, my goal here is to roll him over and get a side control position. So I'm right here. If I cannot reach because that is too far away, it is a good idea to move sideways. That way, that angle is way easier. Grab and watch. I'm just stepping and my thumb is down and then I drive forward. As I drive forward, I can release so I can face him and get a good side control position. Right here, front headlock. Or you can also do the same technique from here, right? Going from underneath. It's the same knee tap. So let's do that variation there. So either here or if you're here, say you try to hold something there, I'm going to go over and get the tail. I'm going to drive forward and this is even an easier transition. Sideways side control, make sure you know, get the underhook. My ear would be glued to his chest here. Now we're going to train the guillotine choke from the turtle. Once my, my opponent's shot was stopped and I sprawled on top of him and I got the front headlock or we were fighting on the ground and I got to this situation, I'm always thinking about getting an attack there, especially if I have the front headlock. It's very easy to tra transition from the front headlock into a guillotine choke. I don't want to finish the guillotine from the top though unless I have to. Why? And with the exception of mixed martial arts, I will be able to generate more power pulling into guard and having that guard closed is a great thing for me here. Now, if this was mixed martial arts, I really would try to finish this from the top. Even if I couldn't finish with my submission, I would apply knees and strike him here. Why? Because if I fail the guillotine, if his head pops out, I'm going to end up with him on top of me raining down punches and strikes. So let's see how this is done. I am right here in a front headlock position. I need to open this up a little bit and I'm going to slide my knee. Which knee? The knee on the same side of the hand control here. So my right knee will slide forward. In order to do that, I have to pull him up. So from here, I'm driving forward, pull him up, and I almost force his head there into a duck under position. So his head is now underneath my armpit. When that happens, I'm going to go ahead and establish my grip. We're going to use for this technique a basic overhand grip. My fingers are going like this. Once I get the grip in this situation, I can finish the lock by throwing the leg over the back and pulling guard. Once I get to this position here, I'm going to bring my elbow in and arch my back in order to get the tap. Once again, I snap him down, got to the front headlock. Watch how I'm going to open up the space to go with that knee in. In, grab my hand. Don't fall and grab the hand later. All right? Make sure you come in here and grab everything before you fall. The good thing about this here is sometimes you catch his arm in there. Awesome. It's going to be very hard for him to escape. Pull the elbow in and arch the back in order to get the tap with the guillotine choke. In this class, we're going to cover back mount attacks here. So we're going to start from the turtle position. I'm going to try to get the back mount and we're going to show you three basic ways of achieving that position. We're going to start with a very basic one and then we're going to move on to something a little bit more advanced. So I'm controlling right now near the hip. I'm going to start right here by getting this grip. So I'm going to bring my far arm inside, control his right wrist, palm down, thumb on one side, four fingers on the other. Now I'm going to open my right elbow there to open up this gap. Right now it's really hard for me to get a hook in. It's almost impossible. There's no space there. So I got to create a gap for me. Open it up. This gap now allows for me to come in with the first hook. After I got the first hook in, I already have a number hook, so to speak, on his side. So the second grip will come over the top, like this. 
I'm looking for seatbelt grip and a future over and not under. Now, as I'm reaching for that grip over the shoulder, I'm going to move. I'm not going to stay in this position where my legs are crossed. That makes no sense and that's not good for me. So I'm going to move my knee to the side. And I step with my knee right by his knee. Now, if he opens up a little, you can see now that I got one control under, one control over. I'm going to try to get this lock with a gable grip. Once I got that gable grip, the reason I'm stepping right by his knees to prevent him from posting that left leg up. Once I roll, if he cannot post, my hook will pull him right on top of me, opening enough room to get the second hook in. Now it's an easy transition to the rear naked choke. Let's see that again. I start with a good stance here. I shoot this arm in and I control the wrist. I open the elbow. I shoot my foot in. As I'm doing that, I'm already looking to go over the top. Control and move him over. Get the second hand in. And right now, it's rear naked choke time. Now the second technique we're going to execute, it's going to be a step through picking up the ankle. So when I step through picking up the ankle, my near control can be either a wrist control or a far collar control. Anything that's going underneath the arm here. So I'm not trying to go over the top, I go under. Say I use a basic control, the same control here. Now, the next step will be to switch knees. I got my left knee down, right foot on the ground. I'm going to bring my right knee down and left foot on the ground on the far side of my opponent. My thigh is heavy on the back of his you know, belt here, so right on his lower back. I'm going to go ahead and after I place that foot on the ground, I'm going to grab the ankle. If I have, do you see what I did here? I try to shift my way forward to get him to open that space for me to grab. That's fine. Sometimes he has live toes there. Go ahead and bring, yeah, and it's easier. But if he's like this, you got to let go of the pressure there for a second so he can actually put your fingers there like this. So I'm just cupping right here. Once I get that position, I have my right knee down by his right knee, preventing him from post with the right leg. Now, if I start pulling him back and rolling to the side, he will have to follow. And now I'm going to start bringing my left hand back, opening him up for the first hook to come in. Keep rolling to the side, and now open the other hook up so you can place the second hook in. Once I let go of my ankle, I always will pursue here, a seatbelt grip, unless I have a particular attack in mind. I start from the normal position here. I get one grip that goes under, say to the wrist, so we don't have to rely on the gi. Now I'm going to switch, switch knees here. Left knee is down, I'm going to bring my right knee down instead. Take one big step. Now, control the ankle. Fall back, pull, and bring one foot in. Keep rolling. Bring the second foot in. Now, if that second foot is giving you trouble, just raise that underhook so there will be plenty of space. Seatbelt grip or a submission. The third and final one is the complicated technique of the set. Now the way that I'm going to do this is shooting the knee through and bringing my opponent over the top. Now I must have a strong grip in order to execute that. If we're doing no gi, I'm going to have control of this here. All right, some sort of under control on the far side. If he's wearing a gi, I'm going to shoot through and once again I don't want to stay there forever. Once I grab the far collar, so I'm going to go over the top and try to grab James's right collar here. Once I grab that collar, I go for the technique. I don't want to spend a lot of time there. And I also control the near arm. If I cannot get in here, this is a great option. 
Because this time, I do not require much on this side. All I got to do is maybe grab the gi right here. If I can get this, that's a plus, but it's not required. You can see that even if I grab the wrist right here on the outside, I'm going to be able to pull it off. Now, once again, I'm going to have to do a switch here. So as I'm reaching there to grab that far collar, and you can see here how it's done, once I get a hold of that collar, I got to go. I got to follow through with the technique. This knee is going to shoot through right here through this gap. And I'm, getting, I'm going to be completely sideways. Once I'm sideways, I'm going to start pulling James with that grip. And at the same time, I'm going to kick through with my right shin, which will be by the side of his thigh. So I'm right here. If I can get this near arm control, that's great. If I'm just here, that will work as well. I'm going to switch through and fall through. I'm shooting my left leg over the top here. Because of the nature of my left-handed grip, I'm going to be able to pull him on top as I kick with the shin. I open him up for the first hook. The second hook will follow. Seatbelt grip. I'm right here. Near arm control. Over the top to the near collar. Here. Now I'm going to do the switch. Right knee through the gap. Sideways. Shin against the outside of his thigh. Go ahead and pull him over with the left hand, left grip. If this is an underhook, that's fine. And then finish by getting the hook in, second hook in, seatbelt grip, or rear naked choke. These are the three basic ways of getting the back mount from the quarter position. In this series, we're going to cover basic attacks from the quarter position, sideways here. So I'm approaching my opponent. I establish a good quarter position stance here where my knee is low, my foot is planted so I can have drive off that foot in case he tries to stand up and get out of here. And now I'm going to start looking for chokes here. We're going to do the basic clock choke, the clock choke variation, grabbing the opposite collar and rolling over, and we're going to show you a basic clock choke defense. The first thing I need to do with a clock choke here is get a good first grip. So my hand is going to come over the top in front of his arms, and I'm going to get his gi right there. It's very important not to try to overreach with the grip, meaning that you don't want to bend your wrist upwards because you're losing power. So I'm keeping my wrist pretty much straight. There's slight tilt to my forearm, but the wrist is straight. And this is how high I want to grab. Not higher than that, definitely not lower than that. So let's open it up. I grab right here. This is the proper height. Once I get that grip there, my opposite grip will be over the top, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the far wrist, like so. Now. The goal here is to bring that man down so I don't want him to be on his elbows as I'm executing the clock choke. So what I will do here is to bring that wrist in and now I'm going to break his balance forward. How am I going to accomplish that? By bringing my left shoulder between his shoulder blades as high as possible. If I'm flexible enough and I can get it to the back of his neck, that's excellent. If not, I'm going to take whatever I can get. So right here here. Now as I do that, watch as I pull him forward. I pull him forward and I now throw that leg over. I'm ready to execute the clock choke here. I'm going to pull up and I'm going to start walking. As soon as I start walking, he will tap. So right here, here, and controlling the wrist. Bring that wrist in so you're going to be able to break him down. Now force everything forward and my shoulder follows through. So I'm trying to drive his face into the mat. I'm trying to bounce his face off the mat. As I do that, I bring my shoulder as high as possible. I won't be able to do that and maintain the same base. So I'm going to shoot my left leg through like this. 
And now, sometimes I will get the tap here, otherwise I'm going to have to walk through. As I walk through, I pull that gi collar up. And it's very easy for me to get the tap. If I cannot get the tap right away, keep on walking and the tap will come. There's a simple variation to the clock choke and that involves controlling the gi with both hands. One hand is going to attack the high color, the other hand is going to attack low on the same side as you are. So the first grip remains the same. The second grip here goes underneath and I reach in for the near collar. So James's right collar here. If you can see, I'm not grabbing high because now it's easy for him to fight both grips at the same time. I'm grabbing low. Now, as I do that, I'm going to try to break him down and finish. You can do it from this side, and I'm going to show that first, or if it fails, you can jump over. The key here is to, as I'm pulling up with my first grip, I want to tense the gi here. So I want to pull down towards his feet. So this gi lapel here is stretched out. This will bring more tension into the choke, and will force him to tap. First grip, not too deep, not too shallow. Second grip, low on the collar. Now I'm going to start breaking him down the same way and stepping through. As I keep walking, the tap will come. Once again, first hand comes in, second hand comes in. Now I don't want him to stay high as he is right now, so I'm going to break him down, shoot the leg through, my hips are off the ground and I start walking until I can get the tap. There's a variation to this. If I cannot get the tap right away, I'm going to execute a jump to the opposite side and as I'm jumping I'm trying to break my fall by holding on to that first grip. This will bring a lot of pressure on the choke and chances are he's going to tap either in midair or if I'm being nice to my partner as soon as he falls. Right here, right here. I try to break him down and everything, he starts to resist. I'm going to jump to the opposite side and tense everything up. Now we're going to talk about the clock choke defense. Clock choke defense is very basic. The first thing is if you can avoid getting caught in a clock choke, that's obviously the best way to go. How would I accomplish that? By keeping a good turtle position where my chin is stuck in at all times. However, if he gets a hold of my neck there, there are ways of defending this here. The first thing I would try to accomplish here is drive my right shoulder forward and I start controlling this gi sleeve here so I can hide my chin underneath. So I don't want that gi or his hand to be against my neck. So I drive that forward and I start controlling this here until I can dive with my chin in. Normally I won't be able to bring his forearm all the way across my face since he will be applying pressure. So I'm going to be, you know, doing this. Only a little bit of my chin is underneath his forearm. Alright? Like, like so. Now once I do that, I'm going to base out with my left hand. And I'm going to step up with my right foot. So here, here, and my right hand goes to this position. Alright? Now there are a couple of things I can do from here. I can simply explode forward, so I would explode and get my head out of there. Or I can simply sit back, so I slide forward, bring my knee here, and I sit back, executing the sweep. Let's take a look at that again. He gets me on the choke. First thing, shrug the shoulder and move the elbow until you can hide that chin in. The second thing I want to do here is to place this hand on the ground, post up with my right foot, and bring a right underhook. Sink it deep there. 
Might be a war here. He's not going to give it up very easily. So we're going to scramble for the position. Now, I can simply shrug and pop the head up. Or I slide the knee to cut the angle. And I fall back in order to get the sweep. In this quarter position class, we're going to work on transitioning from the quarter position or turtle into side control and we're going to work in a crucifix. We're going to show you the basic crucifix choke and we're going to show you the crucifix defense. So I'm going to start <clears throat> the same idea as the previous class with a good base from the side. Foot planted on the ground, slight bend at the knee. This knee is down. I'm not really reaching in too far with my right arm. I keep it close to his hip here and this hand is attacking his side here. Now if I want to transition into side control I'm gonna to have to bring my right arm underneath my opponent. So I'm gonna first come right here and instead of attacking the collar I'm gonna reach all the way and attack the far arm by cupping it right here. I don't have to grab it just go over the top. Now I'm gonna leave this position here and I'm gonna square up with him so I can shoot the arm underneath and get my hand on top of my hand here. So left hand controls the arm by the elbow. I square up and I shoot my right arm underneath so I can bring my right hand on top of my left hand. The next step is to bring the elbows in towards my belly and drive forward, arching my back as I do so. I can land in many ways, sideways side control, it's a pretty good option here. So I'm right here, first thing that I do, control this arm. Now I'm going to square up with him and bring my hand in that position. Pull the elbow towards you, now drive forward as you arch your back. Now as I land, I can cover, and that brings a lot of pressure on top of him. The next position will be the crucifix choke here. In order to get the crucifix, I'm going to start with a grip that looks very much the same as the clock choke. So right here, hand on the collar, hand right here. Now I'm going to have to take control of my opponent's left arm. I will do that by taking a big step with my left leg and bringing my foot right here. As after I do that, I'm going to drag that arm back and close it right there. There are many ways that I can keep that arm trapped. I can keep it trapped like this, almost extended, or I can keep it trapped, trapped right here where the arm is in an L shape. Depends on what I want to do with that. There are other positions here that can come out of this situation, such as the reverse omoplata. If his arm is straight now, there are less things that I can do. So, you know, you can go with one or the other. It depends on what you're thinking about. So, I start right here. I'm going to take one big step. I'm going to bring it back and put it right there. Trap it. Now, I'm going to go over the top. As I go over the top, I'm going to close a triangle with my legs, I'm going to bring this hand right here behind my neck and I maintain that grip there. So I roll over, I'm going to close a triangle with my legs, so this way here, not this, but this, this hand goes behind my neck and now I have a great position here. My opponent will not be able to react because both of his arms are locked as I choke him bringing pressure by pulling on that geek collar. Once again, right here, show the collar, bring that foot back, controlling the arm. Now you can choose to do it like this or you can move that arm to the second leg. Now roll over and land right here. You can see that I slid my hand behind my neck. I'm triangling my legs there, and all I gotta do 
It's applied pressure in order to stop him from escaping. Now we're going to cover the crucifix scape. I'm going to start in the crucifix position here. So I'm going to have my opponent lay right there. Now, first thing I want to do here, go ahead and grab my collar there, is not to panic. So if I try to panic, and if I try to roll the wrong way, I'm not going to be able to escape. If I move this way here, I'm going to make the choke tighter. So do not move towards your, your opponent's head. That is wrong. First thing I need to do here is to take some pressure off my neck. The way that I'm going to accomplish this is by pushing off my feet, bringing my hips off the ground. Now, just imagine a hitchhiker escape. I'm going to crab walk towards his legs here. So here and start moving. Keep moving. Now at one point here you can see that the pressure in my neck is better. Or now I can resist and I can no longer walk to the side. This is the position that I want to use to jump over. I cannot jump over right away. I need to walk towards the legs first. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump over and pop the head up. Now I'm going to cover so I can get the side control position. Once again, we're right here. He gets the collar. Now, first thing, drive up. Now, to get some slack there, otherwise you're going to tap right away. Now, start moving towards his legs. You can see that, that what that does is that it brings his shoulder off the ground. Now, I push up my feet, I swing around, and I bring that head up. I now drive forward and I get to my side control position. That's how you escape the crucifix choke. In this class, we're going to demonstrate three escapes from the turtle position. We're going to start with my opponent facing me, and I'm going to show two escapes when my opponent is by my side here. So let's start with the front one. I'm going to find myself in the turtle position with my opponent facing me and applying either a front headlock or some sort of hold here. It's very important for me to be able to control his arm. Now, if my opponent is one of those wrestlers that likes to do a deep front headlock, things are way easier. Now, if he gets a good front headlock, and that's the one we're going to do, it's going to be a little bit more complicated to maneuver him around, but I, I'm still going to be able to execute what I call a sit-out. So let's start with a sit-out position here. I'm going to be right here in the turtle. My opponent will come in, get a hold of my chin, get a hold of my arm there. Now, what I need to do here is to be able to control the near arm, so the arm that's controlling my head. I'm going to use my hand here, and I'm going to control it like so. Now, if I do this here, it's really demanding here on my left shoulder. So in order to make things easier for myself, I'm going to step up with my left foot at the same time that I do that. My right hand tries to reach for the inside of his knee. Why do I do this? Just to prevent him from trying to circle in a fast way and get in my back. So right here, if you want to grab there, that's fine. If you just want to tap, that's fine as well. Control by the elbow and step up with the left foot. I'm planting that foot on the ground. The next step here will be to sit through and sit out with my right leg. At the same time, I'm focusing on bringing as much weight as possible with the back of my neck into his shoulder. So I'm right here. I'm going to sit out and bring my neck back as I arch my back. So right here, shoot through and do this. Now you can see I'm on my toes now as far as my left foot goes. That hip has shot all the way through. Now, from this position, you can see that he has no power. It's not a good idea for him to try to hold up forever here because if I apply pressure up, it's a Kimura lock. I'm not going to worry about the Kimura though. What I want is to take positional dominance here. So I'm going to go over the top towards his hip here. Now I'm going to switch my hips in order to face him. And now I have the turtle position. So he gets me in a front headlock. I'm going to go ahead, bring this one here. And if I need to post before I grab, that's fine. I can either grab if he doesn't have a lot of pressure there. 
or if it brings a little bit more pressure there, I'm going to pose and sit up and then grab. Now I'm going to shoot through as I bring a lot of pressure with the back of my neck. This one I did it a little faster. You can see that his face just bounces off the mat there. My left arm is going to go towards the hips and my left knee will come down. Now my right foot is planted on the ground and I do control the situation here. Now we're going to start talking about ways to counter and get out of the turtle when my opponent is attacking from the side. So I'm right here in my turtle position. By the way, before you think about escaping, remember, before the escape, you always get in a good stance. My stance here defensively, as far as the turtle goes, is not to establish the referee's position like wrestling, but instead to bring my elbows in towards my hips, my forehead is down on the ground, and my hands are by my neck, protecting my neck there. Chin is always down. Now, I'm going to look up in order to explain, but you should also always be tucked in. We're going to do two shoulder rolls. One for when my opponent, you know, does not allow me to control, you know, a lot. So I'm going to do a near side shoulder roll. And then I'm going to take a far side shoulder roll when I get a hold of his forearm here. So from here, what I'm going to do here, if he doesn't really allow a lot of control, I'm going to bring the near shoulder towards the ground. So like this. Now as I do that, you can see that I threw him a little to the front. That's what I'm trying to accomplish. After I get the near shoulder on the ground, I'm going to be able to execute a shoulder roll. When I execute that shoulder roll, it's very important to hit him first with the left hip. So I'm going to hit him with the left hip to get him out of position. And then my left calf or foot will strike him on the side of his body. I do need to do that because I'm not going to shoulder roll into his left. That would be bad because he would stack and pass very easily. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to bring that shoulder towards the ground. Now, as I shoulder roll here, if you want to use that hand right there, it's okay. Make sure you strike your opponent with your left hip bone. So this is what I'm talking about. And you can see that this left leg there controls the distance. I'm away from my opponent here. I'm not too close. Watch what happens if I don't do that. So I'm right here. I bring my shoulder in and I simply do a shoulder roll. I'm going to be too close. He can stack and he will be able to pass. This is not where I want to be. I'm right here. Near shoulder down. Now strike him with first with the left hip bone and watch my left leg, this is very important. Here, that left leg controls the distance, allows me to make sure of where my opponent is and get him back in a good guard position. Now, the final one, we're going to do a different side of skate. So, I'm going to skate now this way, controlling the arm over the top. I got to the turf position. My opponent got careless there, and I was able to control this arm here. Normally, I want to control the wrist, not the gi. Control the wrist and bring your elbow in. Now, I got control of that. The only problem with this escape is that if I keep my arm right here between his legs, he's going to wrap his legs around it, and as I try to escape, I'm going to throw myself into a crucifix choke. Bad idea. I don't want that. What I want to do instead is to bring my elbow outside his thigh, like so. So I'm right here. I'm going to bring the elbow outside the thigh. And now I execute a shoulder roll on the far side. So the first skate with the shoulder roll was here. This one will be my left shoulder to the ground. As I do that, I bring the wrist further in and I look towards my opponent. And I roll. As I roll, he comes over the top. Once he comes over the top, I don't want to land with my butt on the ground because I'm taking pressure off of him. I want to make sure that I'm high up. And now this transition here is where it gets tricky. Now, I cannot move towards the head. It's a little slower. I could do it, but it'll, uh, it will make me lose time. Normally, what I prefer to do is let go of the wrist 
and turn it towards his leg. This hand here shoots through almost as if I was thinking high crotch there. So it shoots through this side here, the inside of his thigh. I'm going to bring my left knee down at the same time. Now, what that does there, that overhook here, and what I'm doing there with my hand is that I'm placing it inside of my thigh, it guarantees that he will not move away. If he tries to shrimp, I just apply pressure down, and his leg is completely trapped. This is very tight. After I control him, I'm not going to wait here forever though, I'm going to drive forward and adjust the position so I can get a good side control. Let's see it again. I'm going to turn position here, get control of the wrist, I bring the wrist in, elbow tucked in, now move the near arm here. I want my elbow outside his knee. Shoulder roll while looking towards my opponent. He rolls over, but off the ground to keep pressure. Let go of the wrist, move towards his leg. Knee comes down, and I cover to get to the side control position. Those are the base escapes from the turtle position. Thank you.